Hello. Hello. I've arrived. Artist, archivist, VTuber, and today, alleged medical professional and amateur tactician. And amateur interior designer, I guess, given what we're about to do. Anyway, you can call me Tiberius Vanderfield. Yes. Hello. Hello. Yes. So, let's see. Tonight? Today? Sometime? <laughs> Arc Nights? This afternoon, perhaps, even? But yes. Arc Nights? Uh, I guess there's not a whole lot else to say about today. Tomorrow, we should be seeing some more of the usual. The, uh, yeah, the usual Coffee Talk collab with Sheppy Sheps. Because, yeah, today, yeah, today is Tuesday. I got a bit confused there for a second. But yes. So, okay, before I go off on a tangent, we're going to go through the rest of the schedule. So, Friday, around, or no, Saturday, Saturday, around the same time, around 2 p.m., we should be seeing some more Arc Nights. So, yes. So, now that we've got that out of the way, let's go and talk about what I was going to talk about. So, yeah, given the, given my work schedule as of right now, it looks like we are going to be streaming mostly on, or rather, yeah, so instead of streaming on Mondays as the first stream of the week, as I had initially been planning on, Tuesday is going to be more convenient. But yeah, around 2 p.m. seems to be a pretty good time as well. But yeah, I could go earlier or I could go later, but yeah, this is pretty good, I think. Yeah, of course, a lot will determine will depend on the events of the day and any other any other responsibilities that I may have. So, let's see. I guess there's not a whole lot else to be said. Yes, I already went over the schedule. I went over the change in the in the schedule. Yeah, that should be basically everything. Yeah, we're pretty up to date on VODs currently. I guess we don't have the I don't think I have the latest Arc Knights VOD. Uh, up and available just yet, but that should be up before too long. I don't know, I might have it up, I don't know. <laughs> I honestly am not aware. Um, oh, also, I forgot to mention, yeah, the collab is at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, generally speaking. So, now that we've set all that, I think it's about time that we got started. Ba -ba -bum. The movie. But yes, so, we're going to the base today. I guess I don't know, I don't know why I decided that we needed the movie here. I've already checked the base and made sure that everything is okay. And indeed it is. So, the base. But yeah, last time around, I realized that I had forgotten how building mode worked and I got kind of confused and so we didn't talk about it very much, despite the fact that I was planning to. But let's talk about it a little bit now. So. This base is going to look a little bit different from how your base would look if you started out, if you had just started out the game, because it has been uh, upgraded a reasonable amount already. So yes, so now that our control center has been upgraded, we have access to another level. Yeah, so there are certain materials that you can gather or craft, and we'll get into that, that allow you to build additional structures in your base, and so we will do that. Yes. So, having cleared that, we now have access to these additional rooms. Yes. And so each room, each room sort of has a certain size to it, and you can host different types of facilities in them. Ba -ba -ba -bum. I suppose I probably didn't necessarily need to do that. Can I? There we go. I don't know why I wasn't responding properly. But yes. So, the center ones you use to construct dormitories. These are places where you place operators to uh, rest. And we will get into that, the system there, in a little bit. But yes, over on the right-hand side, we're running a little bit low on construction materials. So hopefully I won't have to make too many more. But if, it, if I do, it's going to be a good introduction to the crafting system, I suppose. So... We'll make the best of it one way or the other. Debris cleared. Yes. So, you can construct different types of rooms. 
There is the training room, which you can use to increase your operator's skills beyond uh, the normal amount that you can just from like on their page. Yeah, once you have reached a certain level of skill training, you need to use the training room to increase their skills further. But yes, you can create a an HR office. This lets you recruit more operators faster, basically. But yes, you can create a workshop, which allows you to create additional things. And so it seems that these rooms over here are not quite of the size. Yeah, or yeah. The rooms on the right here can only host those facilities. The ones on the left, which I can't craft right now, we'll get into it. You know what? Yeah, like we said, workshop. So, workshop. You put an operator in the workshop. There are various operators with... Mm. All right. Didn't think about that in terms of spoilers, so I'll have to be careful of that in the when I edit this. But yes, so different operators have different skills uh, that can be relevant or not relevant to the uh, crafting process. Yeah, a lot of them will give you bonuses uh, based on certain types of materials. They will give you additional byproducts or whatnot, or increase your chance of byproducts, reduce the amount of uh, reduce the amount of morale that they need to be able to do their tasks and whatnot. And so, yeah, so morale is the system by which your operators can accomplish said tasks. You can see Cement here is 24 out of 24. She is 100% ready to go. So, workshop, you can construct all sorts of things in here. This is basically used by and large to take lower rarity materials and turn them into higher rarity materials. And so, yes. So as you can see, you do need to upgrade your workshops and whatnot past a certain point to be able to create additional things. Yes, yeah, so you can turn furniture into furniture parts and you can use the furniture parts in the store to get new furniture. It is the cycle of life. But anyway, so let's make some building materials. We're probably not going to need a lot, but 12 seems like a decent number. So yes, so by default, each item that you create will drain one morale from your or two morale rather from your operators again this can be this can be affected by their base skills there we go so yes so you don't need to have an operator who is you know actually able to focus on their job necessarily to be able to to be able to craft things it's just that if you don't you can see there is a byproduct rate, which I didn't really mention before, uh, but there is a byproduct rate and the byproduct rate increases or determines the chance that you'll get an additional, additional materials on top of what you are crafting. So yes, what you can get as a byproduct depends on what you are making. So yes, so if your operator has no, uh, no morale left to work here, then they will be unable to get you any byproducts. But yes, another thing we should mention is you can look around your base. You can see all your operators hanging around, having a good time, and you can click on them. Oh, please don't throw out any of the pink household goods in the engineering department. Those I'll are try not to. Overtime use. But yes, so. <clears throat> Clicking on your operators, tapping on them while they're in their base, while they're in your base, not theirs, <laughs> while they're in your base, will uh, increase their trust with you. This is my signature dish. How do you like it? Nice. But yes. Anyway, clicking on them all individually, however, can be a little bit tiresome. So instead, you can go up here, and you can go down to trust, <laughs> and there you can there you can get all of them at once. <laughs> so yes. Next. We'll go over the factory, which I guess <laughs> went a little bit faster there than I was expecting, but yes. So in the factory, you can also make things. Yeah, here you don't necessarily need to use materials to craft things. You essentially here create, I guess you can use materials for crafting some things, but the base things that you create are battle records and gold, essentially precious metals. <coughs> And you can use those you can use pure gold you can sell that and we'll get to how you do that 
you can sell that to get money and you can use the battle records to increase the level of your operators. And then of course you can use chips to uh, upgrade into better chips, which you need to upgrade your operators to Elite 2, which we learned the hard way back in the Monster Hunter event. When, because of my factory not being leveled up, I was completely unable to do that. An unfortunate circumstance, to be sure. But yes, I believe I might have mentioned it before, but you can also create Origenium through the, uh, through the workshop. Or if I didn't mention it specifically, I might have mentioned that you can... There was another way to acquire it, and this is said method. So yes, so once again, you can assign operators to your factory. They will have certain skills that will increase the productivity of certain materials and whatnot. And so yes, so here is the trading post. So this is where you can sell. Uh, you can sell your gold. Let's see. Ah, yes. And you can also, this is also where you take the Originium shards that you create in the factory and turn them into Originium proper. So, yeah, right now I don't have the capacity to create Originium shards, so I've just been creating gold and then shipping it off to be sold, basically. But yes. So, yes. Next is the reception room. In the reception room, you can get clues and you can use those to fill out the clue board. But yes, so as you do so, or once you have done so, you can do a clue exchange. And when you do the clue exchange, you get, uh... oh dear. <laughs> oh, I really should have written this down beforehand, but you get one of the resources that you use in the shop. One of the resources that you use in the shop. And so we'll go over to the shop real quick to show you that. Ba -ba -bum. But yes, it was the... What was it? Oh dear. <laughs> oh dear, I'm not quite as prepared as I thought I was. Oh yes, I think it is... No, it was the credit store. My bad, my bad. So yes, that is how you get credits to use in the credit store. Anyway. I've said it before, but I'm not exactly a master of the base. So, we're just going to have to, uh, we're just yes, going to have to live with, uh, a somewhat imperfect explanation, and I'll probably get back to, uh, once I've had more time to, uh, research, I might do a more in-depth explanation of the various facilities, what operators are good for, which facilities, and whatnot, because as of right now, I kind of got nothing. So, anyway... Let us continue reading the stories of afternoon stories. <clears throat> First, let's take a sip. Sip. So yes, so looking at what we've got here, we do have plenty of stories. I think we should have enough time to, uh, or not enough of them to take up a good amount of time here. I'm going to be aiming for roughly an hour and a half to two hours of a stream today. Possibly as low as one hour. Yeah, it depends on how I feel. This is going to be a lot of reading. But yes, anyway, I don't remember if I made that decision on stream last time or not, but given that my primary focus just in general through these playthroughs is the story of the game, I think the stages that don't have any story attached to them and aren't necessary for me to complete in order to access additional story stages, for the most part, I think I'm going to do those off screen or not do them at all, possibly. <laughs> that has been the prevailing, prevailing uh, circumstance for a lot of them. And this also goes for achieving a three star ranking on stages that we have already completed, unless I feel that there is something particularly interesting to be gained from from playing through them on stream if they're a particularly interesting or challenging stage but yes so with that it is time for stories of afternoon chapter two diary Palopsis, you're back 
Yes. Thanks for going on that site inspection for me. I'm almost done with this experiment, so I'll be able to do the next one myself. It's okay. I can go next time, too. Oh? Did something happen? Yes, I'm going to my room now. Okay. I think it should be in this diary. No, this one was written at Rhine Lab, so it should be this one. Yes, this one. This diary is from after I came to Rhodes Island with silence. Let me see. March 21st, Overcast. <coughs> Today, two new operators came to the island, one named Hung and one named Ah. They seem to be from the same place as Wai Fu. It is significant that Ah, who looks very young, is said to be a very famous back alley doctor in Lung Men, but it seems he will not join the medical section. April 2nd, Cloudy. Ever since he found out that Warfarin is Mr. Blood, he has been staying at the medical section regularly. But most of the medical section does not like him. This is because he does nothing to di conceal his disrespect for us as his peers. He is clearly highly skilled at healing arts. Why? April 15th, Sunny. Speaking of Ock, Hung came to take him away after his latest competition with Warfarin. He has since curbed his behavior somewhat. And the medical team is growing accustomed to his personality, at least outwardly. This diary must be from the time of his second duel with Warfarin. Hey, Mr. Blood, how about a little contest of skill? Wow, what an obnoxious little wretch you are. Don't you realize the power differential at work since the last time you lost to me? Are you serious? You think I lost that? Hey, Miss Feathers, you were there too. Who won that? Silence, he means you. I'm Miss Feathers. Analysis determines a 50% chance he's calling me. However, my logic functions have determined I do not want to respond to this form of address. Neither do I. What are you whispering about? Come on, I didn't lose the last one, did I? Ah, we're busy. Please don't interrupt our work. Sure, sure. I'm just asking a question. Give me an answer and I'll leave you to your noble work. Very well. Accessing system records. According to the records, it is true that, objectively speaking, the winner of the last contest was difficult to determine due to the unexpected circumstances arriving at the end. Well, how about that? <sighs> Fine. Let's give you a loss to remember today. <sighs> it's been like this every day since that Auk showed up. I really don't understand why the doctor would hire someone like that. Despite his abrasive personality, there is no denying that his clinical expertise, as well as his natural talent, is impressive. I know what you mean, but I think he looks down on us. Yeah, that, that last surgery really impressed a lot of people, and I was kind of sold on him myself. I figured I'd try to make friends. He ended up treating me like garbage. I hate that guy. Only Big Boss Warfriend could get along with him. Is that what getting along looks like? What do you think, Philopsis? Searching Dictionary Database. Result? Birds of a feather flock together. <laughs> oh, that works on a couple of levels. Well, what's going on in here? Looks like you're having a good time. Ah, Dr. Ansel. We're we were talking about Ock. Oh, I don't connect well with his personality, but it's nice to have a fresh face as skilled as him. Uh, leave it to Dr. Ansel to have nice things to say about Ock. All right, even if we didn't have work to do, you, you can't be chatting up during work hours. Back to your stations. Right. You have something, Ansel? Well, I have the report. The results aren't exactly stellar. That's more or less what we expected, though. Let's start preparing the next experiment right away. Philopsis, you go too. Oh? Yes. Understood. Ock joining the medical section was a major upset to the order of things, and while there was some unpleasantness, I somehow did not dislike it. Oh, I wrote, 
did not I did not dislike it in this one. If I recall correctly, there should be more. Right, here it is. June 10th, light rain. The reconnaissance operators appear to have discovered a vein of originium ore in a nearby mountain range, and Dr. Calcite has sent a team to investigate. To be safe, Silence and a few medic operators went along. Nothing else to do today but wait for test results. May 15th, sunny. Gaviel came back from an operation and told us at dinner that she grew so annoyed with the enemy scurrying around that she personally waded into battle and cut them all down. She seems to have forgotten that she is a medic operator, but she did make it sound appealing. May 1st, cloudy. Today, after interviewing a new medic operator, I talked with Ansel about what we were doing before coming to Rhodes Island. I couldn't reveal much of the inner workings of Rhine Lab to him due to confidentiality agreements, but it was a meaningful conversation. Yes, this is it. In other words, you are also half patient and half researcher at Rhine Lab? Yes, Silence has me, had me on a customized course of treatment from then until now. And Silence herself is infected, and she has her own course. Such things are not uncommon at Rhine Lab. So, Rhine Lab does a few things just like Rhodes Island. I always thought of Rhine Lab as a technology company. Well, it's not a proactive approach to outreach like Rhodes Island's. I can't say more. But it is safe to assume that Rhine Labs cooperates with Rhodes Island in the area due to a shared outlook. Indeed. Then I guess it's my turn. Hmm, there's not much to say. My home is in Rim Billiton, and since my family was poor, I never had much access to technology or really anything new. After bouncing around a bit, I stumbled on a job listing for Rhode Island. I put in a, a resume just to see what would happen, and here I am. It blew me away when I first got here. I never thought I'd get, ever get to work in a place like this. Indeed, I did not think of Rhodes Island as a small land cruiser when Silence first discussed the cooperation agreement. But I've certainly learned a lot since coming here, and the renewer, renew, eh, renew. Hmm. Remuneration. I've heard a word, I've heard remuneration, but I don't. I think that might be a typo. It's close enough to the word that I... I don't know. I don't... <laughs> it's close enough to what I recall that I'm not confident in saying that it's not how it's actually uh, supposed to be spelled and pronounced. But... We'll, we'll assume renumeration. <clears throat> but I've certainly learned a lot since coming here, and the renumeration is pretty good. It's a bit of a shame I can't get home to see my family more often, though. Family. Um, did I say something I shouldn't have? No, I'm just recalling my family from the database. Load successful. So that's them. I had forgotten. It's hard not seeing your family. It isn't. Huh? It's not? It's not. Never mind. Please continue with your story, Ansel. Oh, um, okay. I guess I can tell you about Rim Billiton. Okay. Fun little exchange. Ansel spoke a lot about his homeland, the look of the mining town, his family, his sister, why he chose to become a doctor, and other such things. I don't know why, but it felt a bit distant to me, like a memory of what my parents looked like. Yes, everyone in the medical section talks about themselves on a regular basis. I am familiar with everyone's past, but for me, it is always a very distant thing. Until then, I had thought it a very normal feeling. However, this is a problem that does exist. Now then, it is time to write today's entry. It may be longer than usual this time. Overcast. I finally returned to Rhodes Island after a rather long trip. Although I occasionally travel with small teams, this time there were some additional circumstances that caused some difficulties. Yes, difficulties.
Uh, excuse me, Telopsis? Hmm? Was I sleeping? Yes, I just need to tell you that we ran into a bit of a situation with the extraction and we need to recalibrate our tools. Do you need my help? No, thanks. You've been a great help so far, Telopsis. It's a purely manual recalibration. No need to bother you. The captain just wanted you to know that the calibration may not be done today, and if you're bored, there's a Kazimira's village not too far from here. You could go for a stroll. It's the only mobile village in the area. It's not that small, and the scouts say there's a fair on today that might have some fun things. Of course, if you want to keep resting here, that's fine too. Yes, I want to see it. Sure, here's a map and some petty cash for you. Sorry, we really didn't plan for this situation, so that's all the Kazimira's coinage we have. Kazimir's coinage? Ah, well, while most places accept Lungmen dollars, they're not universal. Especially these villages outside of nomadic cities. They usually only take local currency. Yes, that sounds correct. There is some corroborating information in the database. Alright, let's get going. Oh, are you going to? Well, yes, this is a small operation, so we didn't establish a base camp. The main point being we can't use our communications equipment. That means when somebody without combat capability wants to head out, she'll need an escort. <clears throat> Not to mention, we all know your physical condition. You definitely can't be allowed out alone for your own safety. This is the first time I have encountered this base camp information. Database update required. Oh, you didn't know that? No, I rarely go out. Uh, uh right. I shouldn't have brought it up, sorry. Why are you apologizing? Nothing. Never mind. Let's move out. In retrospect, he apologized to me because he felt he hadn't properly considered my health and had something and had said something that could have hurt me. In fact, I didn't think of that at all at the time. And here, I encountered my first problem. It seems that I do not know many things that others take for granted. Mm, no, it's not that I don't know exactly. These things are in my database, but I have forgotten them because I haven't used them for so long. Yes, I should adjust the wording. Then, my second problem. Kazimir's scenery is very different from Columbia's or the view from the bridge of Rhodes Island. The air is clean and vegetation plentiful. Most of the villagers were Kuranta, but there were some of other races as well. The village fair was much busier than I expected. After a meeting with a logistics operator in charge of procurement, he showed me around and asked if I would like to buy anything. I thought perhaps I could bring gifts for everyone in the medical section. What can I get you, miss? Uh, hello, miss? I don't know. Huh? You want to buy something, but you don't know what it is? Uh, sorry, my companion is easily distracted. Uh, we want some local Cosmiris goods. At that point, I realized my second problem. I don't know, I do not know what everyone in the medical section enjoys. That isn't to say, we don't have a good relationship. On the contrary, Dr. Silence and I should be good friends according to the broad definition of the term. We've worked together extensively since our time at Rhine Lab, and she's the one who invited me to Rhodes Island. My relationship with the rest of the medical medic operators are amicable as well. But I don't know what they like. I never thought about it. After that, we headed back to camp, and the rest of the expedition proceeded without incident. But, on the way back, I began to think about something I had never realized was wrong. Well, of course, I actually slept about half the trip. On the way to the village, I even fell asleep in the middle of the road. But, to make for an easier road, to make for an easier read, I will omit those details. Since joining Rhine Lab and transferring to Rhodes Island... Lopsis, open up! Ifrit... What are you doing here? Silence is busy in the lab. I heard you were back, so I came to see you. It's like, since you're pretty much always here, it was a lot weirder to have you gone. I'm used to Silence being out. 
I'm so glad you're back. Indeed, I rarely go out. Indeed, I rarely go out. I'd just say that twice, Palopsis. It just occurred to me that I don't actually go outside very often. Huh? Did you hit your head out there? No, it was just some unknown error in the system. It has been fixed. I bought some Kazamira's goods. They're over there. Really? Let's see. Wow, this is a cool wooden sword. Yeah! Phew! Shwee! Check it out! Don't I look like one of those flippy Karantas? No. Eh, whatever. I still want it. Good. There is a storybook on the shelf. You can read it over there. I'm going to write something. Sweet. <laughs> now then. It's been a long time since I joined Rhine Lab and moved to Rhodes Island. I'm completely used to the way things are now and subconsciously consider it normal. But this trip made me realize that's not the case. Not that I reject the life I lead, I have just suddenly become aware of this problem. That is, I am, myself, quite far from normal. Is normal the correct word here? Is it my life that is abnormal? Broadly speaking, I suppose it is. And I simply forget. Even I have a hard time describing what oropathy has taken from me and given to me. I can manage that once Silence worked out a treatment plan for me at Rhine Lab, research and sleep gradually took over my entire life. My body doesn't allow me to do time-consuming work, let alone leave the facility. I am self-conscious about my condition, so even on the rare occasions that I do go outside, I do not move about so freely. For as long as I can remember, all my knowledge of the outside world has come almost entirely from the descriptions of my colleagues, various documents, and the unchanging view outside my window. Now that I think about it, it's only natural that I would aspire to be like Gaviel and Ansel. But before today, I did not realize why. Because I can't help but compartmentalize myself when people discuss their lives. I can engage with their topics, but I subconsciously think that I don't belong in them. Blob says, what are you writing? Doesn't look like a report to me. A diary. A diary? Oh, silence told me to keep one, told me to keep one, but it was a huge pain. True, it is a lot of work to write every day, but it is necessary for me. Why? To keep myself from forgetting. Why do you forget? Because I am forgetful. Um, uh, don't get it. It is better if you don't. Oh, can I see it? You can, but it is all text. I do not think you will like it. Yeah, screw it. I'll go back to my storybook. Right. Now then, where was I? Silence. What's what's the matter? Is something wrong in the lab? Huh? Ah, no. I'm just trying to figure out what to get Ifrit for her birthday. It's coming up soon. A birthday present? Yes, it needs to be fireproof and it needs to be something she likes. A uh, child's mind is so unpredictable. I should just make something myself. What? What? Nothing. I was just pondering how even Silence thinks about such things. Is it that strange? Well, maybe it, it's a bit unlike me. Whoop. Oh dear. That was odd. <laughs> Is it that strange? Well, maybe it's a bit unlike me. But since I decided to take Ifrit with me, these things are my responsibility. Even Silence, who can bury herself in her work for days on end, has such a side to her. I understand this is my own problem. Or, should I say, it was not a problem to begin with. I don't feel so bad, because I do not dislike this researcher's life. On the other hand, if I re hated research, I wouldn't have joined Rhine Lab at all. Whether at Rhine Lab or Rhodes Island, I have seen countless people more miserable than I, and I'm lucky compared to them. And I believe that the research I'm doing is something meaningful. So I'm not writing this as a lamentation, or to say that I've suddenly realized that I've been living the wrong kind of life. I just remembered the purpose of my diary. 
I hear strange noises from time to time. Metal scraping, crashing, shouting, explosions. It's like these voices are coming from deep inside me, haunting me. Sometimes when I wake up, I find myself in a sort of trance and I forget where I am or what I am doing. Of course, I don't really forget, but there's no denying that I'll need more time and energy to remember than a normal person would. I started this diary just to ensure that I did not forget something important. Something important. The Telapsis, why are you staring at me? And what have you been mumbling to yourself all this time? Nothing. You get yourself into trouble? You need me to talk to silence for you? I'll help you once, because we're friends. You better not have done anything too bad. I don't need a spanking from silence. Hee <laughs> hee. Don't worry. Today's encounter made me realize something. When it comes to the important things, just trying not to forget them isn't enough. Rather, I wish I could do more to understand the people I care about. I don't want to regret anything. Lopsis, is Ifrit with you? Hey, it's silence! Ifrit didn't give you any trouble, did she? No, she was very good. Hee hee hee. I'm glad. Are you okay? You seemed a bit off when you came back today. I'm fine, but yes, I was just about to go looking for you. For me? Yes, I'd like to talk to you. Talk? Don't we always talk? I'd like to discuss a few things I've never thought about before. Yeah, we've been using Telopsis for, for a while now, but I don't think we've ever really gone into, into her character. Yeah, I think I definitely want to, you know, way back when. Yeah, I don't know. I don't remember when I stopped or why I stopped, I guess just because I was busy. But yeah, I used to prepare little little uh, sections where I would talk about certain operators, go into their, their detail or their background a little bit, usually talk about their design. Yeah, I do definitely want to pick that back up again. And given, given that, I think Telopsis and, uh, would be a good starting point. Yeah, I'm definitely not prepared for that today, considering that I definitely wasn't prepared for the thing that I intended to talk about when I started the stream. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. <clears throat> All right. So, time for today's kitchen. Sit. 9.50 a.m. Sunny. Rhodes Island Landship, Compartment 2, Cafeteria. North Carag style, stir-fried greens, sprinkled with a little Rhodes Island special seasoning. And we're done. Wow, looks delicious. Oh, hold on a sec. All right, we're back. You flatter me. Such leafy greens are rare in Kerag, so I don't often get to cook dishes like this. Your approval brings me joy. Things are different in the snow fields of Kerag. Many goods are hard to come by, even with money. It's not like you're on this land ship where supplies are so plentiful. Supplies. I think I heard Closure say something about that. Hmm. I don't... I'm trying to, to imitate the accent that I've heard from Gummy, but I don't I don't know how to do a Russian accent very well, so I think I might just I might just uh take on the tone and not concern myself with the pronunciation too much. I guess Rhodes Islands has a special procurement channel that brings supplies and stuff to the ship. They have bases all over the place so we can get all kinds of different ingredients from different places. That explains it, but they really have bases all over? Um, I guess they're like offices or something? I don't really get this stuff. That reminds me, wasn't there a wish list on the bulletin board outside the cafeteria? If there's anything special you like to eat, you can write it up there. Uh, pardon. I heard those pretty girls in procurement check it every day. You're too sweet, Gummy. Call me pretty again and I'll bring you back some candy next time. 
You're gorgeous. Atta girl. Seriously? Matterhorn, right? Just make a note of whatever you need on that bulletin board there and we'll procure it for you if we get the chance. I understand. I'll make use of it. If I find myself in need, your efforts humble me. No need to go that far. This is our job, after all. What's with the stiffness? We're all friends here. Loosen up and talk like a human beings already. We need to take our work more seriously. I don't mind her. Yeah, or don't mind her. We have things to do, so we'll get out of your hair for now. <laughs> Everybody's so nice. Last time we moored by a city, Closure even took me shopping with her. The stuff she bought was kind of weird, but st I still had fun. <laughs> I heard about that. Dr. Calcite was very upset when she'd bought a, when she'd bought, eh, bought a stone mask. <laughs> yeah, that mask was so creepy. I tried it on once. Next time you see something so strange, perhaps you shouldn't touch it. Ah, the food is cooled down and the temperature is perfect. Hmm, salty. This flavor might be a little bit much. Don't worry, I'm sure it's great. Do you think I could try some? Can I? Please? Let me have some. Please let me have some, Uncle Matterhorn. Uh, Uncle? Am I that old now? Uh, of course you can. In fact, it would be a big help for me if you were to be my taste tester. Hooray! <laughs> Come on, let me try it. Oh. Hmm? What's wrong? Um, mm, I kind of feel like there's less plate on this food than there was a second ago. So weird. Am I going crazy? Hmm? Oh well. Give me a bite. <laughs> Chewing and munching. Oh. How, how is it? <laughs> it's great. The veggies are crunchy and juicy and super refreshing and seasoned just right. It's really, really good. Uh, oh, I appreciate the compliment. But I think you're exaggerating a bit. This is a simple recipe designed for home cooking. I can put a copy up in the kitchen for everyone to try. Hooray! I'll also let you try my secret recipe for Ursa's frozen vegetable soup, Uncle Matterhorn. It's super healthy. Ooh, it'll be like a trade. Sounds delicious. I'll give it a try the next time I'm preparing a midnight snack for the ladies. <laughs> I'm sure Prominix and Cliffheart will love it. Lady and the young lady, hmm? By the way, Gummy, shouldn't you send that along that stew you've been preparing? It's for the doctor, isn't it? It'll get cold if we leave it any longer, and that will affect the taste, won't it? Oh, I almost forgot. I better get going. Uncle Matterhorn, the stir-fried greens are mega delicious. Save me the recipe. What a vivacious little girl. Hmm. Show yourself. Hmm. No? Hmm. Then you'll have to pardon me. Ugh. Come on, man. Are we really up to blades and guns now? Where'd you pull that out of, out of anyway? And what's it doing in the kitchen? You could hurt somebody. <sighs> How'd you know I was here? I thought I was pretty well hidden. Biting apple. You. Stealing food from the kitchen again? There's no need for that. If you're hungry, just go to the cafeteria. Did you not learn your lesson last time? I recall a logistics operator telling you if you're caught using your powers to take food or ingredients without permission again, you would be punished appropriately. Punishment? Oh, you mean the one where they made me wear a sign that says, I took food from the kitchen? What kind of punishment is that? I thought they were joking. Hey, wait a minute. You still didn't tell me how you found me. If you hadn't swiped some of the dish I just made, I wouldn't have noticed your presence. I blew it. I was just going to see if there were any breakfast leftovers I could eat, but that stuff you made smelled so good I couldn't resist. Sorry, so sorry. Uh, infinitely sorry. More sorry than sorry could be. You, you, don't, you don't care that much, do you? I care. Yeah, that's a relief. I, uh huh. Wait a minute, what did you just say? Huh? I said I care. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. No way, this could be bad. If he's gonna get stuck in on this thing, there's a problem that could go places. 
You. Uh, huh? What? You didn't use a fork. You grabbed the food with your hands, and you didn't even wash them. That's unsanitary. It's unacceptable. Huh? So that's all you care about? Hygiene is no laughing matter. Show respect to your food, especially when it's handmade. Every serving of this dish contains a piece of my heart. Wait, you washed that apple first, didn't you? You need to take care of yourself as a warrior. All right, all right, I get it. That's the same attitude Instructor Doberman is always getting upset about. Anyway, I shouldn't be butting my horns in here. Come on, I'm really turning over a new leaf here. It's just that, hey, some ha sometimes old habits die hard, and it's the kind of thing I never got to worry about. But you got one thing wrong. I did remember to wash my hands this time. Just splashing water over them for a second doesn't count as washing your hands. <laughs> You're real tough, man. Alright, whatever. I'll remember next time. Frivolous little... Oh, by the way, how did you find the dish you just tasted? Dish? You mean the stirred fried greens? Didn't that gummy girl already stroke your ego? Need a quick tug for me too? Sure, fine. Blew me away. Incredible flavor and your biceps are huge. Any additional glib remarks? Oh yeah, tons. Save them. I'm not sure how much longer I can hold myself back from educating you. <laughs> this is serious. Do you want to? Seriously, do you want to hear the truth? Hmm? Alright, I'll give it to you straight. The dish is good. It's tasty. But how do I put this? I get a confusing feeling when I eat it. Don't talk nonsense. My food isn't capable of sparking such feelings. Gee, you're really no fun at all. But sure, you know, I saw you sigh a few times while you were cooking. Like, full on, you were spacing out and sighing to yourself. It's hard to imagine you put the, out food this good on a, in a state like that. I... Stop, stop. Forget it, man. Don't force it if you don't want to. I don't care at all, really. I don't know what's bothering you, but it's just some advice from old Ethan. Take a look at the big picture and don't do this to yourself. Look at me. There was me back there, but I'm over that. Can't do anything about it anyway. Might as well hell not think about it. Life at Rhodes Island is good. Hey. Changing the subject, I just want to ask. Uh, what's cooking in your pot over there? It smells really good. That's braised beast meat. It's ready to go. I'm about to sprinkle some cheese on it. It's a traditional Kerag dish. Snowlanders all grow up eating it. I made some slight adjustments to make the beast meat more tender. Ooh, that sounds awesome. Can I try this too? Wait, not that. That's... Tip. Here you are, Matterhorn. Master, when did you get to Rhodes Island? And why didn't you inform me you were coming? Uh, just a moment, I'll make you some tea. No need, I'm only passing through. It's just a matter of talking to the doctor about some Kerag issues. It all came up pretty suddenly, so I don't have time to tell you. There is a lot of pressure. The master is pushing himself too hard. I see. Setting that aside, Matterhorn, how is Encia these days? The young lady is in good spirits and her condition is under control. As you instructed, Courier and I have both been keeping an eye on the lady's health. I prepare a separate lunch for her to avoid any adverse reaction to Sir Rhodes Island's food. That's good. Eat up another pot of salt and milk tea while you're at it. Ensi always liked that. Your tastes haven't changed, nor of yours, nor of hers, Master. As you wish, Master. Well, that's that. Thank you. I prepared that specially for the young lady at the Master's command. I'll be bringing it to her later. If you're still hungry, I can prepare something else for you. Yeah, that'd be great. I really want to get some of that tender meat. It's very precious food, specially requested for operators who are passing by the base. This is all we have. Not to mention, braised meat takes a tremendous amount of time. You'll just have to make do with regular fried beast meat. This is discrimination. Beggars can't be choosers. <laughs> Fine, I'll take the good. I'll learn the good stuff. Hmm. That master you're talking about. He's your boss, right? He, that's Master Silverash, who pops up every now and then to chat up the doctor. That's right. 
You've met the master? Whether you have or not, I advise you to take a more respectful tone. They call the master. Is that not respectful enough? Anyway, that boss here is. I heard he's got a couple of younger sisters. Yes, what of them? That feline girl named Encia. She's your young lady now, isn't she? Feel sweet of her brother to send you along to feed her home cooking. You worried that foreign stuff won't agree with her? So that's the young lady. Where's the old lady? What exactly are you asking? The matter of the ladies is the master's private affair. You'd best not ask such questions. Ooh, that's a scary face. Chill, I'm not dumb enough to go sticking my nose into rich people business. So? Ah, pass that sauce bottle over here. There, there for me. This one? Here you go. Thanks. Welcome. Ooh, that's starting to smell good. And we're done. It's just plain fried beast meat, but I made a few substitutions. It should taste all right. There's bread in the basket over there, and there should be rice in the pot next to it. You can have whatever you like. I need to bring this to the young lady now. Remember to wash your hands before you eat. Get out of here. Are you my mother? No, thankfully I'm not. Yeah, get going. <sighs> Too bad that braised meat smelled amazing. I guess I'll wash my hands. Weird. It's one of my such a good boy. Okay, do the soap. The 30 seconds on each hand. Three, two, one. There we go. And we're good. Shaking out his hands. Safe. At least wipe your hands before you grab the bread. Huh? Who's that? Nobody. Just a blacksmith. Hmm? Where's Matterhorn? Thanks, Matterhorn, for the tea. Mm hmm. It smells good. Is there some sesame oil in it? That's how I used to take it when I was little. I can't believe you still remember. You humbled me, my lady. Now then, I'll leave you to enjoy it. I must be off. Hmm. Must have been the master who put in the sesame oil and the tea for her when she was small. But the master hasn't had salt and milk tea like this since he came back from Victoria. He must have forgotten. My lady. Hmm. The young lady picked out all the peppers again this time. She's been doing that since she was small. If you keep being so picky with your food, you won't get a balanced diet. Things will only get worse. Hmm? That reminds me, the master would, in such cases... No, don't go down that road. It's too dangerous an issue. Better just forget about it. Hey, 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 big guy. Hmm? Who's there? It's me. You see something floating down the corridor? Who else could it be? You stupid? Whatever. Here, take this. Don't drop it. What? There you go. I got a thing. Later. Wait. He's gone. What is he doing? It's a sandwich? He burned the bread, didn't cut the edges, and sliced the scale sore meat too thick. It's... Cut him a break. He worked hard on it. Even put in some tangerine slices. It should taste fine. Vulcan. You must be here for my shield. I left it with a few other pieces that need fixing in the kitchen. I'll fetch them for you. <clears throat> it's okay. I'll go with. That guy was pretty chatty while working on that sandwich. Did Ethan say something unpleasant to you? Let me apologize on his behalf. He speaks without thinking, but there's no malice in him. Uh, no, slow down there. It's nothing like that. He said he wanted to give Uncle Matterhorn a taste of aimless youth cuisine as a token of appreciation. I guess he put in his heart into it, and oh, and he walked off with two plates of food that were sitting in the kitchen. What nonsense. Such hooliganism. It is, but why do I get the sense you kind of like it? That's ridiculous. Look me in the eye and say that. <clears throat> By the way, how old is Ethan? Where did he get off calling me uncle? That was a fun exchange. Sip. All right, so we're three chapters in, and we've got three chapters remaining. Yeah. 
that. Well, I don't know. I think... Yeah, we'll do one more. We'll do one more. Yes, I do want to uh, introduce a character that's in this chapter. <clears throat> At least in part. Rhodes Island Landship. Medical Examination Room 6. Open. Say, ah. Uh. Say, ah. Uh. Hmm. Come on, open your mouth, please. I'm just checking your teeth. I promise I won't hurt you. Come on. Don't make me pull out the big guns every time. Hmm. I'll make you behave. Hey. Look. Miss Peril, what do I have to do here? Huh? It's your favorite, isn't it? If you put a, if you're a good girl and help me finish my exam, these honey biscuits are all yours. That's weird. Why isn't she reacting to the honey biscuits? And there's something wrong with your recipe, hibiscus. How many times have I told you not to put weird stuff in your food? You never listen. Here, little Peril, I'll give you this. Sniffing. Oh. But you have to be a good girl. Mm-hmm. Oh. Ah. It worked. That's my little lava. So reliable. Too bad you're not. Okay, let's proceed with the oral exam. Follow the crumbs, okay? And open wide. Hey, hibiscus. Watch your tongue, Miss Peril. Hmm? What? Why did we bring her back with us? Because we felt bad for her. Her infection is very serious. And the head of the Lithanian branch even said, It's a good thing you subdued her. There would have been no hope for her if these police or bounty hunters found her first. An infected person as far gone as her, with the way the laws in Lithanian have changed, almost certainly would have been euthanized. Ooh. If it's at all possible, please at least get her out of Lithanian's territory. Thank you. Even if she wasn't infected, the way she was just attacking people on the road probably would not have ended well for her. At least 24 groups of travelers got attacked before us. She hurt nearly 100 people. And that's just in Lithanian. Who knows what she did anywhere else? Not to mention her fighting skills. I don't think the five of us could have pulled off attacks like that. But all she did was take some food. She was just hungry. Ow! You almost killed me. If Cruz wasn't looking out for me and Beagle wasn't so quick with her shield, this Para would have crushed your little sister with that rock-covered javelin. Miss Para, please don't bite my hand. Ah. Okay, okay. Your teeth are almost finished, just a little longer. Hang in there. Yeah, good girl. Come on, Lava, don't be like that. Like what? I'm just stating facts. What's with you all of a sudden? Getting fussy about every little thing. I thought you loved Miss Pero. Yeah, she's great. She loves me too. That's why she threw all kinds of rocks and flames and ice and pretty much everything else at me. How did she master so many different complex arts anyway? Hey, little Pero, are you sure you never studied Originium arts? Who? Hey, I told you not to move. Lava, quit messing around. Quit screwing around. I'm just asking. Lava. All right, all right. My bad, whatever. Hmm? Ah, sorry, Miss Pero. Just a little longer. And now here, and here. You. And that should be it. Now, Miss Pero, we're pretty much done. Rinse your mouth with this glass of water, and be sure to spit it out. Don't swallow. Hmm. Gulp. Little lava. Huh? Something's bothering you. None of your business. You were the first one in the squad to give her something nice to eat. What's that got to do with anything? After starving for that long, she shouldn't be consuming much sugar from a nutritional standpoint, but she really needs to supplement pretty much everything else at this point. That's why... Wait. You snuck off and bought a bunch of candy, only later realizing you'd spent all your money. That's enough. Or, when you were done bringing Miss Pero back, everyone was worried she'd run off. Only you were brave enough to try to communicate with her, building the trust we needed to take, take off her shackles. Ugh. 
And once we learned that she liked honey biscuits, it was you among the five of us who worked the hardest to make the best ones. Seriously, stop. Your big sister is very proud of you. Come on, don't talk about this stuff in front of her. I, I just did what I had to do. But it's so sweet. No need to hide it. <laughs> oh, yeah? What? So, um, the, like, oral exam. That's the last part, right? Yes. And then, um, what happens to her? Well, that's not up to us. The operators responsible for that are still talking over her case. Orchid said she'd have someone tell us in the afternoon. Anyway, after a busy morning and all those examinations, it's just time to find a place for Miss Perro to... Hibiscus, Lava, are you still not done checking out Miss Perro? If we don't leave now, we'll miss Doberman's training. I'm going on ahead. Huh? Hibiscus? Oh, what? I thought you said you got us out of Doberman's class. Huh? Uh, well... I... Uh... Might have forgot? Why didn't you say so earlier? All I could think about at the time was helping Miss Perro with her checkup. We're dead. Let's go pick out a pair of coffins. What are we gonna do? Uh, okay, how about we take little uh, take little Perro out now and give her the, to the first person who comes along. I hope, just hope we can find them again after training. That plan is a little... Let's see you come up with one. I'm not running laps around the bridge again. And I bet you don't want to memorize anatomy textbooks while doing jumping jacks either. Who would? Okay, fine. We'll do it your way. I'll get her weapons. You deal with her. But, but what about her mouthwash? She already swallowed it. Hurry. Rhodes Island land ship. Outside medical examination room six. Sit. <clears throat> There's someone. Blacksmith. Can I help you? Can you take care of this girl for a bit? We'll come get her right after training. What? Girl? These honey biscuits are our favorites. If she gets cranky, just give Miss Peril one of these. Huh? And don't let her have her weapons just yet. Thanks. Come on, come on, come on. Wait. I'm sorry, Miss Perra. We'll be right back. Ah, only three minutes. She's going to kill us. Ah. Hmm? So, what's your deal? Just, just take the biscuits. Eat them whenever. You want me to carry your weapons? Shake's head. Good. Come on. My workshop is this way. Rhodes Island Landship, Vulcan's Workshop. Come on in, have a seat. If the forge gets too hot, you can go behind the partition. Thanks. Don't mention it. Are you a blacksmith? I'm Rhodes Island's blacksmith, codename Vulcan. 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 Vulcan is me no one? Yes. Can Vulcan check my weapons for me? I'm not authorized to perform maintenance on unregistered weapons. Sorry. Oh. Well. Wow. No, the weapon she's holding feels somewhat familiar. Eh, but well, there's no harm in just taking a look. Can I see that axe you're holding? <laughs> yes. Here you go. Thanks. This is definitely Minoan craftsmanship. Bring back, brings back memories. It's worn. Been a while. But it's been wiped down surprisingly clean. Doing what little maintenance you can, at least. The construction is solid. Doesn't look like it's too damaged. It would be like new after some basic touches. Only no chipping, no warping of the blade, pretty low temperature steel. Steel. It's... Familiar. I wonder if I've seen smithing like this before. Hmm. Um, ma'am? Ma'am? Whatever, she can call me that if she wants. On the axe, near the grip, there's a word. It's my name. 
in Minoan. I wanted to go to Minos, but it's a long walk. No one I met could tell me my name. They could only tell me it's Minoan. Since Vulcan is a Minoan, you must know how to read it. Can you read it to me? Let's see here. Good thing it hasn't completely rubbed away. These characters. They're definitely Minoan. In standard pronunciation, this would be... K-O-B-E. K-O-B-E. Should be K-O-B-E. 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 I'm K-O-B-E. I've got a name. Hmm. Vulcan? Ma'am? Ma'am? Again? Maybe I should give her a little nudge. What? People usually have two names, don't they? Like, Lava has a different name when her sister calls her. She's Little Lava or something. I want one of those. Sorry, I'm not good at naming things. Vulcan is a blacksmith. Blacksmiths are good people, and good people are good at naming. What is this logic? Whatever, she's just a kid. Let me think for a moment. Yeah. You want some nickname? But I only know how to name weapons. What should I do? Aobesius? Aobini? Aobitia? No, no, no. She's not a weapon. I need another scheme. Thank Vulcan. Vulcan? You mentioned Little Lava before, didn't she? Are you okay, Vulcan? Well, there's a pretty easy way out of this. Might as well take it. We'll call you K. K? Yes. Kinda sucks. K. K obey. Thank you so much, Vulcan, ma'am. You're welcome. <laughs> hmm? Don't be scared, K. It's just someone looking for me. No bad guys here. Put down the weapon, okay? No bad guys? No bad guys. There's no bad guys at Rhodes Island. If you're scared, you can go behind the partition. Aobe isn't scared of anything. Good. Vulcan, are you in? Who is it? Uh, hello, Vulcan. I'm an operator with the logistics department. I've come to relay the decision re regarding the little Paro girl who was brought to Rhodes Island yesterday. Operator Hibiscus said she entrusted the Paro girl to you. Is she still with you? Yes, come in. Vulcan! Don't worry, it's okay. Good day, Operator Vulcan. Good day, little Paro girl. Don't call me Paro girl. My name is Kaobe. Uh oh. Uh, all right, Kaobe. Uh, now then, uh, we've been over the details surrounding your rescue, and the, our determination is as follows. Please listen carefully. Due to the circumstances surrounding your arrival, your personal freedom had been temporarily restricted. We apologize for that, but from this point on, you will enjoy the right to free movement effective immediately. Eh. Am I not being sufficiently clear? I think she may not be getting some of the legalese here. Just give me the documents, I'll make sure she gets it. That would be a big help. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Hmm? Why were you out on your own back there? I wanted to go to Minos, but I think I went the wrong way. According to information provided by the Luthanian branch, she traveled from Bolivar all the way to the tri-junction of the east, where she then turned back. At that point, she made a large arc across the north until finally being rescued by our people in Luthanian. This girl can walk, but why do you ask? If you made it to me, if you made it to Minos, what were you going to do? Ask my name, and then... And, and then... Uh, I haven't thought that far ahead yet. Operator Vulcan, please inform her of the situation. Let her make her decision. So, what would you want to do after that? I don't know. Think it through. It's important. I... I want to eat until I'm full every day. Operator Vulcan, what are you... Shh, quiet. She's thinking for the first time. I want to spend half the day in a hot bath and then wrap myself in a warm blanket and lay there until I'm hungry again. And 
and um, and I want a big house where I can keep all my treasures. Carrying them around all day is kind of hard, especially when I'm hungry. And I guess that's it. Understood. If there was a place where you could eat and drink and have a house to sleep in, would you want to stay there? Who wouldn't? But most of the time you have to think a lot and you have to fight a lot of bad guys, and sometimes you might not sleep for days. Even then, would you want to stay there? I'm not very good with thinking. But... Vulcan, ma'am, are you talking about being a hero? A hero? <laughs> uh, <coughs> uh, hem. Yes, I'm talking about being a hero. I want to go there. I want to eat and be a hero. What more could I ever want? Good. Shouldn't you help her? She's made up her mind. Please take care of her paperwork. If she needs a sponsor, you can put down my name. But you're... Should I repeat myself? Uh... If you insist, I have nothing more to say. I'll prepare a follow-up test for Kaobe at once. But please be aware that you will need to attach the appropriate guarantees and an explanation. I will. Well, I'll take my leave then. Get yourself out. Hmm. What's happening? Nothing. You still have a lot to learn. A lot of fights to fight. It'll be a lot of work. Get some rest while you still can. Oh. Hmm. Ma'am? Huh? I'll get used to that. You want a honey biscuit? Lava bake them. They're good. May I? Here. Thanks. What's this flavor? Kind of... Crust isn't crispy enough, and something's wrong with the honey seasoning. Other than that, it tastes exactly like the ones in Minos. Is it good? Very good. Right? But... Huh? Biscuit like this should be eaten fresh out of the oven. Put some jam on it and pair it with a cup of tea. Will it taste better? Yes. I'll ask Matterhorn next door to make some for you, when I get a chance. He's great at making these sorts of things. Really? Yes. Thank you, ma'am. You're going to be subjected to a lot of testing over the next few days. We'll have to fix you up a bit, and then your weapons, too. How do you want them? Y you'll fix them for me? It's a blacksmith's duty to make sure a weapon meets its wielder's needs. Just tell me what you need. Um, I want all my treasures to look as good as the weapons here in your house. And, um, I want the other weapons to be the same color as my axe. Is that too much trouble? That won't take much time. It might be done in time for you to surprise Hibiscus in lava. Really? Yes. Bring your weapons. Let's get started. Yeah! <laughs> uh, I'm exhausted. Little Paro is going to be okay, right, Hibiscus? She's so good at fighting, and Vulcan is so nice. What could go wrong? Huh? Vulcan? Nice? Anyway, I know she won't do anything bad. But I'm more worried about that logistics operator who showed up in the middle of training. He had a pretty big file with him. Gave me a bad feeling. Uh-oh, not this again. In my experience, your bad feelings usually signal good things. I hope you're right. Oh, we're here. Who is it? It's Lava. We're here to see the little Peril. Miss Peril. It's unlocked. Come on in. Ah, Lava and Hibiscus, you're here! Huh? Miss Peril? What, what happened to your weapons? Don't call me Miss Peril anymore. Call me Kaobe. That's my name. Huh? Several weeks later, Rhodes Island Landship. Logistics department, small conference room. I think I know, I think you know why I asked you here today. How did she do? How do you think? Fancy a guess? She doesn't take orders, she just throws her weapons around and makes a scene. How do you think she did? Just tell me your results. Her results. <laughs> well, she passed. Huh. 
We made a mess of herself and failed a bunch of tests, but her personal character and potential qualify her to be an operator. And, taking into account the opinions of several of her proctors, the other details are less important. The doctor is never wrong about anyone. Neither are you. Well then, it's time. Can I get a reason now? Normally, the operator assessment process is initiated by the individual herself. If we, we typically look poorly on situations where an individual has the decision made for her, especially when there is no guardian or relative involved. Sorry. That's all I get? Ah, well, it's not that big a deal. Rules were made to be broken. Just give me a reason. I have to pass something upstairs. Girl who likes weapons can't be bad. All right. Uh, hold on. That, that's it? Yes. I'm going to need a little more than that. A few more sentences or there's no way I can finish this report. I have to? It's important. Well... I'm a blacksmith. I don't know people, but I do know weapons. If you have someone with absolutely no knowledge of weapon maintenance and upkeep, her weapons are going to get damaged after a long period of use. Still, she did her best to keep her equipment in good shape to the best of her abilities. That was enough for me to affirm her talent and potential. How can you be sure she doesn't know weapon maintenance? I mean, that's that's kind of a big ask considering that she a big ask because she didn't know what her name was earlier. Can't use a whetstone, she doesn't know her oils. That's long before we start talking about any rules or scientific principles. The only thing she knows how to do is polish her weapons, and she's good at that. Okay, what else? That should be enough. You know better than me what has to go on a resume. I do. She's a Bolivarian, traveled the whole world looking for Minos and never quite found it. Still don't get why. All I can say is her spirit is commendable. Always good to have faith. That's what I'm curious about. You usually don't pay much attention to people. This Kaobe, is, that, is she that special? What is, it, what is it about her that caught your attention? Her weapons. I'm serious, Vulcan. I'm serious too. How so? Her name was carved into that axe. Minos isn't Higashi, we don't just tape our names onto weapons in case we lose them. If your name is on a weapon, it means something big. Plus, I couldn't forge that axe. But that technique, I know I've seen it somewhere. I want to help her solve the mystery of that weapon. Then, maybe some, someday, she'll come back and solve something for me. I guess you could say I'm just a selfish blacksmith. Hmm? Hmm... You craftsmen have your secrets. Well, whatever. Uh, that's enough for me. Sorry to bother you. Go get some rest. I'm sorry, too. No need. I'm just doing my job here. Thanks. Don't thank me, either. Next time you're out for a drink, come by while I'm on. I've got a new mix. I'm calling it Cosmira's Fury. Give it a try sometimes? Ugh, sure. <sighs> That's why I say HR ain't easy. Kids these days don't know how to write a proper CV. Takes a good chat to dig up all the juicy stuff hidden down there. All mysteries wrapped up in enigmas. I'm <sighs> an HR de director, not a detective. Short, passionate words in a Victorian dialect. The uh, director? Oh, what is it? The director, we're ready to interview the new operator, if you would. I see. Uh, by the way, here's Kaobe's contract, all signed and notarized. File it for me and then send someone to inform the operator of her formal onboarding. Understood. Just a moment. Be sure Operator Vulcan is... Or just a moment. Be sure Operator Vulcan is there for that. You may be needed to explain some of the formal terms and conditions. Understood. Okay, enough chatter. Back to work. Flipping through new operator files. Ugh. Sure enough. Another one who can't write a CV worth anything. Looks like I'm in for another long evening. Sip. Kaobe is a fun character. We'll be seeing some more of her before too long, I think. But yes. So, I think with that, I'll be satisfied. You still got a few more, a few more stories to go. But yeah, it looks like this won't be too long of a diversion. 
I might even be able to wrap it up today if I really push myself, but unfortunately my schedule is pretty packed, so yeah. You know, I scheduled out enough time for the stream, but I would rather be on before going before uh, before too long. So, let's wrap things up. So, the night has been Arc Nights, and it has been a delight as always. Um, let me go. Okay. Yes, Arc Nights. Today, tomorrow, more coffee talk with Sheppy Sheps, 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And then, pardon again, then on Saturday, we'll be playing some more Arc Nights at around 2 o'clock once again. And see us. So, with all of that said, it is time to wrap up. So, uh, if anyone has any raid suggestions, I would be delighted to hear them. If not, I can always find a suggest or a, I can always find a raid target of my own. Bum. I take some time to take a sip. Sip. Pretty big sip there. <clears throat> yes, it looks like we don't have any raid suggestions today. So instead, I think we're going. Or yeah. So given that. We're going to go and raid Canty. It's been a while since I've seen Canty. Canty, and that is an underscore, right? Canty VT. Okay. So yes, Canty is playing some. Uh, what is it? No more Heroes Three. Hmm. I wasn't aware that that was out. I guess I haven't been keeping close track of it. I've never played any of the No More Heroes games, but I've been vaguely aware of them. <laughs> so yes. So, the customary raid message is, as always, we have arrived. There we are. Nope. Wrong button. There we go. We have arrived. So, thank you all very much for being here tonight. I hope that you have had a fine night. I hope that you will continue to have a fine night every night. And I hope that you'll be well until the next time I see you. Thank you all very much and farewell. Let us get this raid underway.